Hello, this is the last video in our series about Centrifuge Server API. In previous videos, we described some API commands available in Centrifuge open source version. And in this video, we will look at some API commands available in Centrifuge Pro version. Let's start. Again, go to admin dev UI. We have a couple connections here. And the first comment we will look at is connections. Connections method allows you to query all active connections to Centrifuga. You can filter connections by user ID. For example, we are querying all connections from user one here. And we can see that user one has two connections currently. Connections output has, has several, some useful information. For example, about connection token at, and it's issued at time. Uh, looking at this information, we can uh, invalidate user token later and we will do this. But for now, let's proceed to another comment. Uh, another co API comments uh, are related to user status feature of Centrifuge Pro. So basically, user status feature described in Centr Centrifuge Pro chapter here. And what it provides is that in some situations, present CPI Centrifuga gives you is not what you actually want. You want to query user status information based on user activity. For example, user clicked a button in your application and you want to understand where, when user was last active on your site or in your mobile application and Centrifuge Pro gives you a way to do this uh, in a very, it provides a scalable backend for this sort of information to keep this information and to query this information. So actually just take a look at documentation. And uh, for now we will only look how to use this API. Let's enable user st status feature. We need to put this into configuration. It uses Redis to keep user status information. So we ne also need to run Redis server. Let's do this. Let's restart Centrifuga. Now let's open our app. Reload tabs. And let and let's query user status for user one. Here we can see that uh, there is some information. Uh, two fields, active online. Online is automatically up, uh, updated by Centrifuga while user has active connection to Centrifuga, and active is actually. Uh, a field which is set to the current time whenever client issues a special type of RPC request. This is described here. You need to issue update user status RPC command from the client side to update active field in Redis. So if we look at index HTML, I added a basic code here. So on every click on document, we are sending RPC to Centrifuga and updating user uh, status information, updating active field of that information. So whenever, whenever we click on the screen here, we are sending RPC request to Centrifuga, actually. You can look at this. Click, 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 click. Here, you can see that 
we are sending RPC on every click. This updates active inf active time in Redis. So if we run this comment again, we will see different values here. Uh, block user. Block user allows to block some user in application in centrifuge by user ID. Again, let's put user one here. Let's open console on the right and let's block user one. Here you can see that user was disconnected. Uh, the important thing is that even after recon reconnect, reload, browser tab, user still disconnected until we unblock him from uh, block list using unblock user API. After that, user can subscribe to channels again. So uh, we will also look at invalidate user tokens feature. Uh, we can query connections for user one. And we can see that it uses uh, user one uses token issued at this time. We can go to invalidate user tokens uh, method and block all tokens issued uh, before the time we just copied for user one. And now let's look to the right where we have a connection. After some time, uh, Centrifuge found, finds, finds that token was blocked. It disconnects a user and user cannot reconnect to Centrifuge with uh, token it has because it was invalidated. And until user get, gets a new token, which is valid and active, it cannot resubscribe to Centrifuge. Here we are getting JavaScript errors in console because we have not provided a method uh, to get new token uh, for centrifuge client. But in general, it's possible to provide and uh, by providing this method, you give client a way to ask for a new token from your application backend. And one more method is revoke token. It allows uh, to revoke token by its ID. In case of GWT token, it's a GTI claim. So we will we won't show this in this video, but it works similar to token invalidation we just showed. So this is the last part of Centrifuge server API walkthrough. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you in next videos. Bye bye.